Written culture is fast fading away in today's society as the computer age continues to strengthen the electronics medium of information against the printing medium. Today, youths, teenagers and children now source for information using different kinds of electronic gadgets instead of books. Tulsa Integrity Foundation is an NGO that has taken up the challenge of bringing back the written culture with their One Child, One Book initiative, providing books for children in different schools across Lagos. Do you know that the One Child, One Book project is about raising 1.3 million books for children in Lagos State? How can I be a part of this project? You can visit the website www.onechildonebook.org or follow on Twitter at One Child One Book. Wow, I need to follow at One Child One Book so I can be a part of this. Hey, how are you all? Fine, thank you. Oh, it's so good to see you today. Yeah. You're fine faces. You guys are looking so big, eh? And that's getting bigger and bigger every day. Are you enjoying your books? Yes, ma'am. Fantastic. How many of you have finished your books? You finished reading it? It has to be all of you. <laughs> yeah? Okay. So, today, you're not, you're all, now you're all in primary six. Yes. I remember when you were in primary four. So good to see all of you today. And to see that you're all doing so well in school. Right? Yes. Okay. My name is Tosin Jegede, and I run Tosin Jegede Foundation. And uh, my well, a primary job, really, our flagship project is called One Child, One Book. And One Child, One Book is actually about providing a book for every child who cannot afford one, um, starting with children in Lagos State. So the idea behind the project came about when we started looking at what we could do to enhance a Times child while they're in primary school. And then we realized that a lot of the children who are in public school um, do not have access to libraries. And um, I mean, there are many other things that did not have. But the, the issue of libraries stood out to us. Because I remember when I was a child, I used to be able to go into a library and borrow books and read story books and return them and borrow another book. But I felt that the fact that children didn't really have that in public school was, was quite shocking to me. And then when we, when we went to schools, we now realized that we were finding that a lot of children were leaving primary school and we're coming out not being able to read or write. And um, that really upset me as well, because I thought if you go to primary school, you can't read, you can't go to secondary school, you can't, you can't succeed, you can't pass your exams, you can't write your tests. You know, you can't, that's, that reduces the chances of you going to university as well. So it's, it, it basically became an issue that, okay, we need to basically work on this. And then we also realized that um, when we look at the figures for literacy in Nigeria, Nigeria is ranked at 143 out of 179 countries. And this is basically really bad. We basically have failed when it comes to looking at the world in, in the list of how many countries, countries are, there are people that are literate. And we thought, the way, if, if children are leaving primary school not being able to read, of course they're going to be literate. They're not going to be able to read or write when they're older. There's not, there's not going to be any difference. So we thought, what can we do to actually um, make a difference with this right now? And for us, that was to provide storybooks to children, colorful storybooks that they can look at and they will enjoy and they want to actually read and um, get them into the habit of reading. And then in that way, we can help them to improve their reading ability. So we started this project in 2012. So the first school we went to was in the UPE, uh, was in Festac Town, um, uh, called UPE Primary School in Festac Town. And that was in 2012. So we went on uh, World Book Day. That was the first of March 2012 and we gave books to children across the school. Then the next school we went to was actually this school that we're in, the Maryland Primary School. We came to this school in 2013, on February 14th actually, um, to celebrate International Book Giving Day. So we gave books to the children in primary four class, and interestingly enough, they're actually the ones behind me here because they're now in primary six. Um, so that day we actually gave them story books to um, encourage their reading ability because in this school, we found out that they have a literacy period, but they don't actually have books that they read during with literacy period, so the books were able to serve that purpose. So what we've been able to do is to basically go into schools and get them to create a reading timetable, or a reading time out in their timetable, 
Um, and in schools where they already have a reading time, we basically are giving them books that uh, facilitates that. So after this school, we went on to the next school, which was in Bariga. Um, so the school there is um, Odunsi, on Odunsi Street, Adei Feshodikwa Primary School in Bariga. The next school from there we went to Army Children's School in Obalende. Um, and after that, we went to um, Emmanuel Nigerian Primary School in Ojota. And interestingly enough, in Ojota, we celebrated a Christmas party where we invited children from all the five schools we had been working with for the last three years. Um, so they got to celebrate together at, in, in Emmanuel Nigerian Primary School uh, in Ojota. We hosted about um, over 450 children at that event. I'm here at Emmanuel Nigerian Primary School. Um, today we are celebrating Christmas and um, what we decided to do this year um, was to bring children that have been on the One Child One Book project. So um, from last year we started the project in um, Fesak Town at UPE Primary School um, and then we came down to uh, Maryland Primary School that was in March this year. They went on to Bariga, that was Adeife Shodikwa Primary School um, in Bariga and I went on to um, Army Children's School, Nobalende, and then went on in this school, Emmanuel Primary, Nigerian Primary School. So that's actually what we've done so far. We've been into five schools. I decided to just bring the children together in one location to celebrate Christmas together. So today for the first time they're able to meet each other and basically they're able to interact and showcase to one another. Um, one of the reasons why we wanted to bring them is that we wanted to just encourage them as well after we've actually um, given them the books previously to um, basically look at, remind them about what we are doing and then also take it to the next level. Um, obviously the end of 2013, 2014 we'll see us interacting with the children in a new way. I'm chilling right here in some secondary school off a of good road with the Tosin Jagadia Foundation supporting a good cause. I'm an avid reader. I have read only God knows how many books in my lifetime and it helps you experience life from a different angle without ever leaving your house. It's one book, one child with the Tosin Jagadia Foundation. There were testimonies from some of the teachers on how the One Child, One Book initiative has improved the reading ability of the children. Hi, my name is Nia Disa. I'm in charge of operations for the One Child, One Book project. Um, I've been friends with Tosin since college. That was 1998 and ever since then we've been friends together. Um, when I came back to Nigeria and I heard Tosin was doing the One Child, One Book project, it was something I was much interested in. Um, because I actually do believe there's, there's a lot to give back. It's a way of me giving back to the community and I did find that the pro there was a lot of potential in the project, which is part of the reason why I came. I was happy to come on board. Um, ever since then, we've been doing this together and it's been, it's been a long time coming and obviously um, it's, 
I mean, we're very grateful for what we've done so far, but we think there's a lot, there's still a lot more for us to do. There's a lot of work more involved in it. My name is Mrs. A. A. Akistonia, the assistant head teacher of Maryland Nursery and Primary School. About the uh, one child, one book, because I have been into this school since past three, three years, and I have not um, tossed in the since past two years ago when she introduced one child, one book to this school. So this book really helped the children or the pupils for those who cannot even read. Because when she introduced the program to us, she started with me from primary four upward. So I was in the class that day when she came. So we gave them the book. So she really tried for the children, even for those who cannot even read before, they were able to read now because after the program, she told us that we should go and keep the book, and we kept the book in our library. So since then, when the people, when they are in free period, they will come to the office to come and pick this book and read and read and read it again. So it really helped the child in reading. My name is Mr. Jiboye Joseph Akindile. I'm a teacher in Maryland North Shore Primary School, Maryland Complex. Uh, I've known uh, Tosin Jagede for since 2012, and she has been a good person to us in Maryland Primary School. Uh, nearly all the child from Primary One, Four, and Six. They are benefited for the books, one child, one book. And then the books, is, 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 there is a lot of interesting story in those books. And then after reading it, they digested it. And at the end of the day, you realize that their reading abilities is more improving. And so therefore, we, we want to thank him, I mean, we want to thank her very well for where what she has been doing to Maryland Primary School. My name is Mrs. Solanewaju J.M. I'm a teacher at Maryland Primary School, Maryland Ikeja. I've been here for, almost, let's say, about three years now. And I've known Tosin Jegede as a very nice, and the children also love her. Anytime she's around, she, they love to see her in their midst. And this, our NGO, they have been trying for the school for the uh, quiet laundry. And the thing has been helping the children. So last year, December, they celebrated the Christmas with them by bringing their Christmas party to the school for the children to feel among like the other children in the school. Um, then from then on, we have been working with um, Jumia and we went into um, a number of schools from October of last year. So we're in schools in Ajegunle, in Agege, um, in Bariga again, and also in um, Oshodi. So these are the schools that we've been able to go to. So from last year, we just decided I wanted to work with primary one students um, and see a way that we can basically build their reading ability from when they're much younger in the early years of primary school and track them as we have done with these children here for three years. So track the children in primary one 
for the next three to five years and see how we can provide books every year for them, how we can work with the teachers, how we can encourage the children in extra um, activities out of the classroom um, with the children. So th this is the kind of thing that we're, we're looking to do going into the future. Really why we do this is because we really believe that the children are the ones that are our future in every sense. I mean, the, the thing that we're trying to do, as apart from just building their literacy skills, it's also to build their personal skills, to build their minds, to be able to get them to, to express themselves and to understand that their ideas are valid, for them to become problem, problem solvers for Africa. So we really believe in creating and expanding the, the minds of our children. And that's really why we do this. In every way, whether it's going to be reading, whether it's going to be acting, whether it's going to be singing, which we're able to engage them in, we know that basically what we do with the children, that day-to-day -day interaction with the children, the mentorship that we have with the children as well, is all really part of what One Child, One Book is about. And so um, One Child, One Book, we hope and we pray that will be a project that will go on for years, where in the future we see these children being the ones that would write books, would go out into communities where we have no idea how we can get into all across Nigeria, all across Africa, and even into foreign countries like China, England, US, they need to hear from us. And we really believe that these children here are the ones that will be able to help us to achieve that. So we believe in One Child, One Book. We believe in what we're trying to do. And we believe in the future of Nigeria. <laughs> Some of the children also express their gratitude to Auntie Tosin, as fondly called. My name is Velat Stojima Kunde. The name of my school is Maryland Nigerian Primary School. I'm in Basic Seats. I know Auntie Tosin has one child, one book. And, the name of, and she gave me one child, one book. And the name of the book she gave me was Camp Rock. I like to say that I appreciate all the things she has given to us and the storybook she gave us. We enjoyed it. My name is Neche M. Sunday. I'm in BX6. The name of my school is Maryland Northern Primary School. I've known Antitoast to Jagade Foundation. I mean, I was in Primary 4, but now I'm in Primary 6. She gave us one book, My Nigeria. I want to appreciate her for giving us the book. My name is Yusuf Hamzat. I am in Primary 6B. The name of my school is Maryland Primary School. I know Anti Jagade since when I'm in Primary 4. So when I when I when I'm in primary five, he gave us a book which is called My Nigeria. I really appreciate Tosin Jagede for the program given or introduced to our school because I don't know how to the she really tried for our school, even for the children, because anywhere she is now, if one of our child or any of the children Tosin Jagede, they will started running or run after I say, Auntie, Auntie, it's because of the love that she showed for them because she loves children all the time, always with children. And at times, if they are doing any program, she will invite our school, we should come. She will not collect any money from us, she will provide bus that we should come, that there is a bus that the children should come there free. If we give them lunch, everything, everything, we really appreciate her. The Lord will continue to be with her, to guide her. And the programs that she has started, started it will not fall or destroy in the mighty name of Jesus.
Hello, I'm Susan Jagede and I'm Program Director of One Child, One Book. Keep watching Link to Humanity on Rave TV. The high level of illiteracy and children leaving primary schools without knowing how to read and write were the major drive of the One Child, One Book initiative. And Tosin Jagere explains all of that as she concludes her speech. What inspired me to start working on One Child, One Book were a number of factors. Um, looking at the statistics that we have for literacy um, in, in the world and how Nigeria is ranked. And then when we look at the population of, of Nigerians, um, as the most populous black nation, and we are ranked at 143 out of 179 countries. It just was quite shocking. I also realized that children were leaving primary school not being able to read, and that was also quite, quite disturbing. Um, and then I also realized something else, because we've been working with children since 2008, um, and even well before that. And then we realized that when children actually have access to, to colorful storybooks, they're actually interested to read, and then they want to read another one, and then they're interested to learn the new words. And we thought, this is something that we, we actually have children interested in here. Why don't we actually provide storybooks to children who are in public schools and get them to have access to these interesting books that they would not be able to, I mean, afford to buy. Some of these books cost upwards of 800 to 1,000 naira. So they're, they're, they're books that are, I mean, they're not affordable for, for children in some of these schools. And we thought, why don't we bring some of these books to the children and get them to be interested in reading. And that's one of the things that actually keeps up one child, one book. So the idea is that we provide a book for every child who cannot afford one. Um, looking at what we've been able to do here today um, in this school, we're celebrating Mother's Day because we believe that um, there's so many factors that, are, that basically help a child to be able to improve and perform well in school. And one of them is basically their home life. And looking at Mother's Day com um, coming up this year, we wanted to celebrate mothers um, in the way of, of basically what they've been able to do for the children. So we picked the top students in primary six and in primary one, and we got them to talk about you know, what they liked about their mothers and just imagine what gifts they would give their mother. And it was good to just see how creative they were in terms of what they believed they could give their mothers. I mean, we've discussed that um, before and after. And they came up with ideas of some gifts that they, they thought they would like to give their mothers. And today we actually invited their mothers into the school and the children got to present these books, these gifts to their, their mothers. And their mothers were all really appreciative of what, what they received. So it was just interesting just to get to show them what, what, what happened in this case um, this year. I mean, it's, it's part of the things that we are trying to encourage, just show them that you celebrate your ideas. So you are excellent, you excel well in school. So what is the next thing? You're working with your mother, you want to appreciate it. What do you think you can give her? And then believe that anything is actually possible. For further details, contact Link to Humanity on these numbers 081 357 or 081 804 Our email is ngo underscore feseka at yahoo.com or you can contact us at anila.fumilayo at raveng.tv and our website is www.fesekang.com.